To buy gold, in-game items, or boosting services in Diablo 4, check out the links in the description and use code NICO for 5% off. Hello and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Diablo 4 and we're going to be doing our build guide for the best way to go with the Druid. And so this one is my Bulwark Druid. Uh, it's basically, it's called that because you really, really utilize your Bulwark. And so the way that I'm going to do this video is I'm going to show you, or try to show you the best way I can as a leveling guide, guide to an endgame guide. That being said, if you're already at an endgame build, it'll be much easier for you to just reset your skill points and redo it to make it look this way uh, but if you're leveling up I'll show you the order that I would do things in to make this a pretty effective one now keep in mind I am not a huge fan of the druid uh, I don't super love playing as the druid uh, but that being said I found this way to go to be the most enjoyable and also the most useful because the druid itself is not I would say it's the least important class out of all the classes even for like end game really hard runs and stuff for teams I'd say the one thing that you can definitely do without is a druid that being said if you do it this way you will be very very useful and effective as a member of a team so let's just dive on in and i'll start off with skills and so starting way up in the basic skills section we're going to put one point into storm strike which is our basic attack here so it says electricity gathers around your weapon deal 89 damage to your target and chaining to up to three surrounding enemies dealing 20 percent less damage each time it chains you gain 25 percent damage reduction for three seconds after dealing damage with storm strike so like i said this we need a basic attack a because you have to level up in each area to progress to the next and b this one works pretty dang well for this build so after we do one point into there we're going to put one into enhanced storm strike which says storm strike has a 15 percent chance to immobilize all enemies hit for 2.5 seconds which is useful and then one into fierce storm strike so storm strike has a 50 percent chance to make enemies vulnerable for three seconds then we're going to put one point into claw which is going to be our other basic attack so shape shift into a werewolf and claw at an enemy for 100 damage uh, just one point into there and then one into enhanced so claws attack speed is increased by 10 percent and then one into wild claw so claw has a 15 percent chance to attack twice so those are our two basic attacks and that's everything for the basic skills moving us down to our core skills we're only going to do one down here and it's going to be predatory instinct so we're going to put three points into predatory instinct so critical strike chance against close enemies is increased by six percent once you've upgraded all the way that's it nothing else for the core skills you can see i've got one here but that's just from a uh, item contribution nothing else in core moving to defensive skills we are going to focus on some and it's going to be kind of the biggest part of this build where the first thing is earth and bulwark so five points into earth and bulwark rocks around you for nine seconds granting a barrier that absorbs 63 percent of your base life or 264 in damage for me right now uh we're going to upgrade that to enhanced so that will make you unstoppable while it's active and we'll upgrade it to innate which says rock, rock shrapnel flies outward when earth and bulwark is destroyed or expires dealing 145 damage to surrounding enemies this damage is increased by barrier bonuses it's very useful Useful, keeps you safe you can use it a lot uh, it makes you unstoppable while it's active and then you can deal damage when it's done next we're going to do blood howl again we're just going to do one point into this which is going to help us shape shift into a werewolf and howl furiously healing you for 20 percent of your maximum life this one is just useful for healing yourself uh then we're going to upgrade it to enhanced blood howl which says kills reduce the cooldown of blood howl by one second and preserving blood howl so blood howl also increases your attack speed by 15 percent for four seconds so the blood howl tree is just going to be great for our survivability so we're going to do one two, three that's it. Next, we're going to put one point into Ancestral Fortitude to increase our non-physical resistance by 5%, and three points into Vigilance, so we can gain 15% damage reduction for six seconds after using a defensive skill. And that is all we're going to do for defensive skills. Moving down into Companion skills, we're going to put one point into our Poison Creeper, so a Poison Creeper periodically emerges from the ground every seven seconds and applies 138 poison damage over six seconds to an enemy in the area. Very useful for that. Then we're going to upgrade it to Enhanced Poison Creeper, so that will emo- uh, it will increase the immobilized duration by one second and brutal poison creeper so your critical strike chance is increased by 20 percent against enemies and strangled by poison creeper so this will be quite useful we're going to use it a lot it's pretty easy to like it it cools down quickly so you can spam it a decent amount and it is useful in combat especially against large groups then moving us down into our wrath skills we're going to start with hurricane and so form a hurricane around you that deals 582 damage to surrounding enemies over eight seconds it's very useful we're going to upgrade that with enhanced 
so enemies who are damaged by Hurricane are slowed by 25% for 2 seconds, and then Savage, so enemies affected by Hurricane deal 20% less damage. So they're going to be slowed down, and they're going to deal less damage. Very useful. Next we're going to move down to Crushing Earth, which we're going to put 3 points into, so Earth skills deal 15% increased damage to slowed, stunned, immobilized, or knocked back enemies. Then we're going to put 3 points into Safeguard, as you can, and that will give us uh, Critical Strikes with Earth Strikes, or Earth skills fortify you 7% for 7% of your base life, and then we're going to want 3 into Stone Guard, so while you have Fortify for over 50% of your maximum life, your Earth skills deal 12% increased damage, which is very useful. Then we're going to want just 1 point into Neurotoxin, which will give us Poisoned Enemies that are slowed down by 8%. Then we'll want 3 points into Envenom, so Poisoned Enemies take 30% additional Critical Strike damage, and 1 into Toxic Claws, which will give us Critical Strikes with Werewolf skills deal 8% of their base damage as Poisoning Damage over 4 seconds. And that will be all that we're going to do for our Wrath skills. Then we're going to move down to our Ultimate skills. And in our ultimate skills, we're going to do Petrify, and we're going to, obviously, it only takes one, so we're going to do one, and that says, in case all nearby enemies in stone, stunning them for 3.75 seconds, you deal 30% increased critical strike damage to enemies affected by Petrify, so we're going to want that. And then just the first upgrade, so Prime Petrify. So Petrify's effect duration are increased by one second. This is one of the instances where the ultimate skill is something that, yes, I recommend using, and it's useful, but it's not the main part of the build. You know, it's not a huge portion of it. It's just that little bit that you use, and the reason we use Petrify is just because it's more useful for this build than any of the other ultimates. Next up, we're going to put three points into Defiance, so Nature Magic skills can deal 12% increased damage to Elites. Then we're going to put two points into Natural Disaster, so your Earth skills will deal 8% increased damage to Vulnerable Enemies, and your Storm skills will deal 8% increased damage to enemies that are stunned, immobilized, or knocked back. Then we want three points into Resonance, so Nature Magic skills deal 6% increased damage. Triple this bonus if the Earth skill is the the next skill cast after a storm skill or a storm skill is the next skill cast after an earth skill so when you're doing a uh, storm and earth skills back to back you're going to get a uh, much larger bonus so instead of that six percent which you get for everything it's going to be 18 percent if you do them back to back so resonance is very useful then we just want one point into quick shift so when shape shifting skill transforms you into a different form it deals five percent increased damage that's useful but we want it so we can get to heightened senses which we're going to want to put three points into and that one says upon shape shifting into a werewolf or a bear gain 12% damage reduction against elites for 5 seconds. So, very useful at protecting you from those elites. Then down to our passive skills. Nature's Fury is the one we want for this one. So, casting an Earth skill will give us a 30% chance to trigger a free Storm skill of the same category. In addition, casting a Storm skill has a 20% chance to trigger a free Earth skill of the same category. So, it's the same thing. We want to focus on those Earth and Storm skills for this build. And so, Nature's Fury makes perfect sense for that because it has a decent chance of triggering a free Storm skill or Earth skill when we do that. So very, very useful. That's all the skills for this build. For this, uh, for the druid class, we have the spirit boons as our special thing. And so basically you collect spirit essence and you turn it in to uh, over at Tur Durla, uh, Dulra to unlock boons for different animals. It's kind of a dumb system, but it's doesn't take that long to get stuff. But anyway, when you do this, uh, if you're activating these boons, we'll start with the deer. The one you want for that is going to be wariness. So that'll give us a 10% reduced damage from elites. Uh, for the eagle, we want swooping attacks, which will give us a 10% attack speed. For the wolf, we want pack leader, which will give critical strikes, have a 20% chance to reset your, the cooldowns of your companion skills. So that one's useful. And then for snake, which we don't have yet, you want masochistic because that will give you an increased healing boost. So broad level overview of the spirit boons. They don't, in my my opinion make a giant difference but if you do that's the way you want to do them now moving on to aspects for this build we're gonna go through them quick uh for the helm i recommend the vigorous aspect that'll give us a 10 percent damage reduction while shapeshifted into a werewolf so that's useful for our chest armor we're gonna want the aspect of might so that will give uh, it says basic skills grant 20 percent damage reduction for two seconds so that's useful with damage reduction for our gloves we are going to want the crash stone aspect and for that one it says skills deal 30 percent more critical strike damage to crowd controlled enemies we're going to be crowd controlling lots so this will help us deal more damage. For our legs, the aspect of disobedience is the best way to go. That is going to give us that uh, increased armor for four seconds when we deal any form of damage, and that's going to stack up to 25%. So that will help us take less damage, which is always very, very useful. For our boots, the ghost walker aspect is the one that we're going to want to go with, and this one says, well, unstoppable, and for four seconds after, you gain 10% increased movement speed and can move freely through enemies. This one's going to help us move around a lot and not get stopped and bogged down as much. Very, very useful, in my opinion. Uh, the... Uh, 
perk that you do on your staff depends. So if there, for one thing, there's a unique item that you can use called the Great Staff of the Crone. If you have that, I recommend using it for this build because it's the best way to go. Otherwise, just focus on maximizing your damage output, especially if you can with any Earth or Lightning abilities or Storm abilities, I should say. And then I like the aspect, the basic skills gain 30% attack speed. I just like that because you're going to be cast basic skills a lot and that will increase their attack speed. For our amulet, if you've got the symbiotic aspect, I recommend using that. Otherwise, I like using things like the aspect of mending stone, so the duration of earth and bulwark is increased by six seconds. In addition, killing an enemy with earth skills replenishes 24 of your active earth and bulwark barrier, so it can make your bulwark a lot more effective. And since that's a huge part of this build, it's important. For our rings, again, if you've got the aspect of natural balance, I recommend using it on the, your first ring. Otherwise, the tempest works great because we're going to be using that hurricane, so your hurricane damage is increased by 7% each second while active, so that one is useful. And for our second ring, uh, it's another one I like using the rapid one on, so our basic skills gain that 15% attack speed, which is very, very useful. As far as our stat priorities, so what you want to look for when choosing which items to wear for this build, I'll just go down the list. We'll start with our helmet. Uh, the biggest thing to look for in a helmet, the biggest two things I should say, are anything that's going to reduce cooldowns and anything that's going to increase your max health. Those are the most important things for it. Secondary, I would say anything that increases your basic skill attack speed or uh, anything that's going to help with barrier generation, which is something we always want to focus on and our bulwark build because it's about the barrier. For our chest, uh, our two most important things are going to be uh, any damage reduction while fortified or any damage reduction from poisoned enemies. So that those are going to be big because A, we poison enemies with our tendril thingies and uh, we want to reduce any damage we're taking. After that, uh, damage reduction from close range enemies is important or anything increasing our max life. So those are useful. For our gloves, our most important things are to increase our attack speed and our crit damage. After that, uh, our lucky hit chance and critical chance are the next most important things. Things. For legs, uh, overall damage reduction and damage reduction from poison. Uh, other than that, our damage reduction from fortified or damage reduction while injured are going to be very, very useful. For our boots, anything that increases movement speed is priority. After that, fortified generation bonus is great. Anything that's going to give us a boost on our armor while we're a werewolf slash werebear will be useful or anything that gives us damage reduction while we're injured. So all of those are going to be useful on boots. And so for your weapons, it depends on which way you to go. Arguably, it's probably better to go with a totem and a one-handed weapon for this build just because with most staffs you're not going to be able to change the best uh, output of damage you can do with that and if you do that your totem you should focus on your crit chance or your damage reduction against poison enemies uh, and for your one-handed weapon which goes with your totem uh, you're just going to want to focus on increasing any of your crit damage and your vulnerability damage because that's kind of what we're going for basic other than that if you've got a staff that you want to use for it like I said if you have that unique one that's obviously best otherwise focus on overall damage output and damage against stunned or vulnerable enemies stuff like that's going to make it very useful for this build. For our amulet, most important things are anything that's going to reduce our cooldown or give us any damage reduction while we're fortified or to uh, increase our movement speed. That's useful for our amulet. For our rings, again, anything that boosts our vulnerable damage or our uh, barrier generation, since those are the two areas that we want to focus on most in this build. Those are key. Other than that, improving crit chance or our max life are going to be very, very useful. For slotting gems into our weapons and armor and such, uh, for our weapons, we want to focus on emeralds so we can really boost our critical strike damage against vulnerable enemies which is huge for this build uh, for armor arguably diamond for barrier generation is probably the most important otherwise ruby for life for adding to your max life those are the two most important ones i prefer diamond because again this is a bulwark build so it's mostly about the barrier uh, but like i said ruby works as well because we also could use that increased life and once again as is usually the case for these builds the best thing to do with your jewelry is add whatever skulls you can to increase your armor value because the higher we get that the better this build is. So our basic gameplay loop for this one is actually pretty dang simple. What we're going to want to do is cast Bulwark basically immediately when we get into combat because it's you know, the smartest thing to do and it's going to protect us. And then we're just going to want to claw our enemies into submission. So over and over again that's what we do. Uh, whenever you can it's smart to activate your hurricane ability, which is going to give just constant damage to everyone around you, which of course is obviously super useful. And uh, on top of that, if you can petrify, that's also very, very useful. Uh, but I really recommend only using that against elite enemies. After that, it's important to make sure that we're constantly having our uh, poison creeper in the field because, you know, obviously it's important to be able to poison our enemies whenever we can. 
and uh, it lasts for a long time and I find it to be pretty useful for not only damaging the enemy but obviously also slowing them down. But again, it's just going to come down to making sure that you've got Bulwark active as much as possible because that is going to make the largest difference in gameplay. And then whenever you can, uh, use your Blood Howl, which is going to give you that uh, crit chance increase, your attack speed increase, and help heal you. So that's always very, very useful in this build. But that is the basic gameplay loop. Basically, just make sure you've got Bulwark up as much as you can, and that uh, whenever you have the ability to pop in some more Creepers or anything like that, or Howl to give yourself that increased survivability, do it. Uh, but that's all for today. Hope this build was useful. Uh, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of the uh, Druid, so if you have a build that you find to be more fun or more useful than this one, I recommend letting me know down in the comment section. But that's all for today. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you liked this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.